Kenneth was this very direct, arched, theatrical queen <laughs> that um, went straight to the point. I mean, I just think he was brilliant at doing that. No, no, Barbara! Tent up first, bunk up later! Mischief. That's his enduring quality. That's why the kids like him, that's why the teenagers like him. That's why you continue to like him. Yes, that's right. Right from the beginning, from the first appearance on Hancock. <laughs> Hancock to control tower. Something strange is happening. There's a peculiar knocking sound on the windscreen. <laughs> the side cockpit open to see what's wrong. Good evening. <laughs> it's a nice cold day. You can ask me. He sounded like somebody who would almost have lived in the radio set, like some gremlin or a goblin. You couldn't actually imagine him as a flesh and blood figure. Who's done this Nobel? His characters achieved a sort of heightened reality. In other words, they they were big and they were over the top, and uh, you know, the, you know, he'd use every range of his voice and and flare his nostrils and open his eyes. My bowels are perfectly all right. Why bring them into it? Well, as you well know, Sir Bernard, irregularity can cause slight fever symptoms. I'm not irregular. I'll have you know I'm one of the most regular fellows in the business. The American Indians have a, a mythical figure called the trickster um, that is a being who can take on the, the attributes of a lot of other beings. He can become a tiger, he can become a snake, he can become a horse. And, and Kenneth, I, I didn't realise, is kind of the trickster of the English class system. The way he could, he could go from those long, extravagant vowels of the upper class and he could swoop down into the guttural, cockney, working class vulgarity in a single sentence. My father was a cockney. No, he didn't talk like me at all. No, he hated my kind of talk. He was, what are you going around with a plum in your mouth for? <laughs> talk like that for, putting it on, putting it, giving yourself airs. I wasn't giving myself airs at all. I, I realised that, actually, if I really sort of had a, one drink too many, I could actually let go with it and actually almost start to become Kenneth Williams. And then, you see, you start to realise that, in fact, there is more than one voice. You see, because this very uh, patrician kind of uh, avuncular kind of uh, refined voice, but then you can also go in the drop of, a, oh, drop of an act into a kind of costamanga cockney, you see, like that. <laughs> oh, you got him off to the tail. <laughs> and I heard another man on a bus getting off, and the conductor had said, he called out, Registry at Piccadilly, Shaftesbury Avenue, and this man coming down the stairs said, Did you say Let's Be Avenue? <laughs> And the conductor, the conductor said, no, I didn't, but do you want to make something of it? And he said, no, not without Miss Strawberries. And got off. Completely illogical line. Not without Miss Strawberries. What on earth Was he a gutter snipe or, or was he a toff? Or was he in some strange way both? Well, of course, he was in some strange way both. And I think that dated back to his childhood where he he felt himself to be something of a changeling some sort of princely character who'd been dropped in on this rather unfortunate and rowdy inner city family great Londoner, loved London. He came from a completely London family with all its old-fashioned musical humour and old-fashioned musical attitudes too. His father was a, a fairly, um, fairly rough uh, and yet Victorian stern father and made life pretty uncomfortable for Kenneth and his sister. Well, yours is one of the few shops remaining that is like the shop my father had in Marchman Street, Peter. That's right. My father had no time for anything fancy, you know. I mean, a man I remember once came into the shop, oh, I'd like a blow wave. And he said, blow? You'll get no blow waves from me. I'm not doing no blow waves. Why are you blooming iron? Iron off, iron. I'm not having no irons in my shop. Get out. I usually have the blow wave. Yes, well, I'm no good at that, sir. But I know where I am with an iron. Mm. 
My mother used to take the cash. And one of the customers, he said to me, I was there, he said, you know, she's got that little television so that we could watch the racing. So I said to her, you know, that's too small. You want to get the new Echo model? Lovely, is 17-inch console. He said, and your mother turned around, she said, oh, 17 inches, you console anyone. <laughs> he said, we all laughed. He said, don't expect to hear that. He said, do you, from a venerable, grey-haired old lady? I said, no. And he said, she's not typical, my mother. She always loved numbers. Numbers like, I'm a lady policeman. She was very fond of that. Yes, always did that number. She used to sing, I'm a lady policeman, I'm ever so ladylike, oh, I'm ever so ladylike, ta-ra-ra. -ra. When I draw me truncheon, nobody gets a strike. Oh. In his element, singing these real old pub songs, and he loved them. I think he felt very safe and secure with that kind of uh, environment. Just the other day, an actor who'd worked with uh, Kenneth uh, on one occasion, stopped me in the street and said that he'd seen my show and said that it really had brought Kenneth back to him. And he said it reminded him of a time when he was in his local pub in Hammersmith and Kenneth was in there. And he said that Kenneth was entertaining the entire pub, whether they wanted it or not. And when it came to closing time, he actually stood against the bar and said, No! Nobody leaves! You dare try and put your glasses on the bar! You're all going to stay here, do you hear? And he actually kept them there. They had a lock-in and he stayed there until two in the morning entertaining until they were exhausted. And then probably went home and wrote in his diary, I behaved appalling last night. I was drunk and made an absolute fool of myself. That was the dichotomy of Kenneth. His talent as a performer began to emerge without a doubt during the war when he was out in the Far East and Singapore and so on with the, the army troops, very much like it ain't half hot man. And the OC lined us up and said, now because you're entertainers, I understand they had to all act, that's fine, but I, I want you to go about behaving like soldiers. I will not have a lot of this effeminacy and mincing about. <laughs> well, you could hear it in the back row, get the madam. You're quiet! <laughs> you want to come on, you see, singing. We are boys of the service, we're at your service, entertaining you. One of those sort of openings, you see. <laughs> and he watched this, and oh, and dreadful. Dread boys of the service, dreadful is too effeminate. And all those sibilants, boys of the service, terrible. No, let's make it men. Men of the service, I'll go back off and come on again and sing. Men! So we all came back, we're men of the service. Very campy, very theatrical, full of people who wanted to go into the business and indeed did when they got back to London. Stop trembling, Jack. You're making the tankers rattle. Oh, you gave me a tank, Captain. I'll see. Stop talking, Jack. I understand you haven't seen me, Jack. Close one eye for no. I'm in hiding, Jack, and no one's to get wind that I'm here. I'm riding out of town as soon as it's dark. Get some follow-up to my horse and bring me some mail. Not now, Jack. As soon as the gang have gone on duty. Do you understand, Jack? Close one after yes. I was seen by Orson Welles, and they asked me to be in his production of Obedick. I was playing the lookout, I was doing all that. She blows! Oh, great white spout! She blows! Oh, my voice. <laughs> Talk about sperm whales. You know. <laughs> Awful, rapid, like, on and on and on. And the man that was doing all the swaying and the movement was Billy Chapel, and he said, I'd like you to be in this musical I'm doing, a Sandy Wilson show. So that led into that, you see. Mm. I did a, 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 a musical about a boy who ran a newspaper, a sort of, you know, balmy, juvenile new statesman thing. And I did that. And the audition was ludicrous because they said, you've got to sing this song. And in a deep bass voice, he launched into a nautical ballad, which went, I think, uh, Tossed in the cradle of the deep. <laughs> Billy said, oh, Kenneth, come on. You know perfectly well this part is a 12-year-old boy. They said, oh, no, that's quite wrong. You'll be in short trousers, you know. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in short trousers. So try to make it boyish. Have your power, just your power. And it was terrible to get up there, because I'm by nature a baritone. I mean, I'm a natural baritone. I can't do anything in the tenor range, let alone soprano. 